Hey everybody, it's Winston Faircloth. <laughs> Happy Saturday to you guys. I uh, just wanted to hop on here live today and give you a little bit more of a download on what's going on with uh, re my refinement process. This, this week on the podcast was episode one of a four-step process I call refinement. And what prompted the day's live was I had the opportunity this week to go to um, uh, to go to uh, to do some coaching in a mentors group that I work with, and uh, in that mentors group, I asked a simple question: So, what is your word for the year so far? <laughs> so, your year so far this your year this this year, what would you use as the common word for your year? And, you know, this this past year has been crazy. It's just been so unpredictable and so unexpected. And so when I talked to folks in the community that I was coaching in the other night, uh, the one, two words really came up all the time, exhausted and uh, overwhelmed. Those two words kept coming up over and over again. And um, hey, I want to raise my hand and say I am right there with you. Um, my April was very much like that. Um, I had really hit the wall. I was beginning to um, not only be feel the sense of overwhelm and exhaustion, I was having the third, the third leg of that stool, which was, um, which was really. Um, almost resentment. Uh, I would say resentment was also part of the experience I was feeling then. So as a natural encourager, I just knew that I couldn't go any longer uh, with that kind of state of mind. And, you know, this year has been so challenging in that way. And it doesn't have to be that way. And in the 60 days that followed this, I followed what I'm now calling refinement season, um, I learned some things that I wanted to share with you here in my community and also to just make this resource available to you just to give you another way of thinking about uh, what's going on. So refinement is restoring the flame within and it's a play on retirement, you know, living here in Florida and being uh, of a senior age. Uh, I'm not ready to retire, but I definitely want to get that passion back. I want to get that sense of excitement and commitment up to a higher and higher level. And so over about a 60 day time frame, I went through a four stage process. And my four stages were to unplug. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Unplug, unlearn which is really hard for people with lots of life experience, rest, prioritizing rest, and then this process of relearning, reintroducing uh, new beliefs into the concept. So in, in this week's podcast, I talk a lot about unplug. And so today I just want to give you some practical applications of unplugging uh, and give you some things to consider in terms of how you implement unplug in your life. So what do I mean by unplug? Well, we're going to curate, we're going to take a moment, we're going to take a step back from all of the inputs that we've had in our life and are a part of in our life. And we're going to curate our connections. In other words, which voices are we going to listen to and pay attention to? Our content, whether those are courses or classes or masterminds or or things that are popping up on our smartphones and the communities. And for me, I ended up, I ended up taking a intentional decision to, to unplug from many things I found extremely valuable. And as I share in the podcast, I unplugged from some coaching programs, some mentorship and some other courses that I had made significant multi five figure investments in. And I had to just get away from them for a while because what was going on inside of me was I was really my, my head was spinning like a top. 
I felt all these competing voices going on and I couldn't even hear my own voice any longer. And so the refinement process is a step-by-step -step, uh, journey of helping you rediscover that voice and that flame from within. And so today uh, I encourage you to go to the podcast. I'll have a link here at the very end that will help take you to the latest episodes of the podcast so that you can dive into this four step framework. But today I just want to pass on a couple of tools and tips that I use from a practical perspective. So the first one um, is uh, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook and, and my desktop, the distractions there. And so, you know, I have, I've really struggled with social media, especially in this election season. And so the, this Chrome extension called the newsfeed eradicator, it works for both Facebook and Twitter. And what it does is it basically takes out in Facebook. What it does is it takes out the, the feed of all the people you follow and, and grandchildren from people they follow and all these other stuff that can flow into your main feed. And what it does is it blocks that with a really nice handy quote of an uplifting quote. And what it allows me to do is to just navigate over to the Facebook groups that I want to participate in. I really enjoy the, the groups that I've opted into and are part of. And that's really the only thing I want to see in Facebook these days. And so on the desktop, it's a great tool. It's a Chrome extension. It's free. And it really helps me kind of filter out a lot of the noise so I can really listen to and experience the parts of Facebook that I want. And then the other app that's also a desktop app is called Freedom. And think of it as um, it's rules based. So you can set it has a number of different types of websites that you can temporarily block. You can set times of day to block your access to these apps and um, you know it's really a great you know, i don't want to eliminate uh, being able to go to linkedin and to other things on the web but i don't need to be going there all the time and so um, freedom has been a real helpful tool for me in terms of helping me on the desktop side and in terms of the handheld or portable side of the house um, I've just installed an app called Motion. And what Motion does is it looks at how many times a day you're touching your screen and how much time that you are picking up your phone and how long that then you're scrolling on your phone. And it, uh, it's a very intuitive free app that helps you just be more mindful about the number of times that you're interacting with your phone. Um, but, you know, a lot of the manufacturers, whether it's Apple or Android, have a version of in, uh, apps inside their ecosystem to help you monitor your, your screen time, which is always a little bit of a scary notification on the weekend when you get notified how much time you spend on uh, different apps over the past week. And then the do not disturb function is really helpful. I'm an Apple user, and so um, I really enjoy uh, being able to use that. And the new sleep function in Apple has been a real godsend in terms of making access to the phone more challenging as it's time to go to bed. But I'm also going to ask you to go bigger. In this season of Unplug, I mean, hopefully you, didn't, you don't get to the same level of pain that I was at when I faced this challenge in April. But I decided to go big in terms of my um, all these inputs that was coming into my, my mind and, and my soul. So one of the things that you can do to minimize the attention seeking applications that are on our phones is to delete notifications. Um, they're just trying to get your attention. And I would say to you how critical are some of those notifications to your day-to-day -day life. Most of the apps that are on my phone are conveniences, but they're not necessities. And so this season of unplugging is helping you curate. That's the key word here. You know, what works and doesn't work for you. 
The other thing that I did, I took the radical step of deleting email from my phone. Um, and I challenge, you know, people uh, kind of scream at me a little bit when I share, share this particular suggestion of taking email off your phone. And I challenge you to say, is there any, you know, in your day-to-day -day work, if you're an entrepreneur, you're running your business, uh, most of the folks I work with are in the, in the either beginning stage of building their business or they have an established business. How many emails are of an urgent, immediate nature that land in your inbox in a, in, in a given day? You know, here's what I would say. I'm working with people who know how to reach me if something's an emergency. They're not going to send an email right? That trusted circle of clients and internal contacts know how to reach me with something that is of an urgent nature. And they know that it's not via email. And so I don't need email on my phone. I can check email when I come to my desktop. That's going to feel radical to some of you, but I'd, I'd ask you to challenge yourself and really look at your inbox over the last 24, 48 hours and look at the emails that landed there and ask yourself how how urgent are any of those emails and if they are urgent can you begin to train people on how uh, an alternate way to connect with you for those urgent matters and then i've also removed temptations and i think that differs for all of us but you know facebook and twitter came off uh, my phone uh, instagram and linkedin stayed on my phone, but they're not on the front page of my phone anymore. And so those kind of, it, you know, it just takes a little more effort to get to those other apps. And I'll say that my life is tremendously better having taken email, Facebook, uh, Twitter off of my phone. Um, I, and that's the whole purpose with this unplugged season is for you to be more discerning and take intentionality about these interruptions that are in your life, because this will make possible step two, which is coming up uh, on the podcast on starting this Monday, is unlearn. And you can't really begin this process of discernment if you're all if your head is always being on a swivel with all of these different inputs. So refinement's not for everyone, but. I bet if you're feeling overwhelmed or exhausted, this could be a practical first step for you to regain uh, that fire and passion from within. So uh, my question to you, what helps you unplug? Make sure you comment here uh, within, uh, within our community. Share your best practices. Let's help each other really grow and become better at unplugging from those distractions that are really counterproductive in our lives. And if you want the podcast information, here's where the address is winstonfaircloth.com slash blog. That's where we have all of our podcast episodes, has all the podcast player apps to the side, and also has some other resources that can really be helpful to you. Well, that will wrap it up for today. I'll see you on the next live. Take care.